Hi guys, in this video I'm going to be looking at something known as fine tuning, which is supposed to show that this universe and this galaxy, the solar system, the planet, everything around us is fine tuned for life, in particular for our existence as human beings. Now if this were the case, theist apologists argue, this would point to a designer and would therefore warrant a belief in the existence of a designer creator god. I mean this is this is rubbish and completely useless argument. Something I will demonstrate using different approaches and angles. Now the claim is that the environment, the natural environment, is governed by parameters expressed as mathematical quantities. These are made to look incredibly precise and observed in different areas and factors, all governing and determining the elements and building blocks of the natural environment we exist in. Because these parameters of nature are observed and measured down to several decimal places, they must have been fine-tuned by something supernatural as changing anything in the slightest would not enable life. Human life, which is what the entire universe was made for in the first place. Now, as rival groups claim the very same or very similar things, there must be different gods at work here, different creators. And theists can't agree on which god because their respective gods are not defined. And here's a guy who thinks physical necessity, chance, or design. And of course, Tzotzis agrees. And there are only three possible explanations. One, it's physical necessity. Two, it's chance. Or three, it's design. There are only three possible explanations. <laughs> they all quote the same publications by Barrow and Tipler from, I don't know, like 30 years ago, because it contains words they don't understand, but which sound impressive enough like 50% decrease in the strength of the nuclear force. They all use sound bites from Robin Collins, Hugh Ross or Paul Davies. The problem is that they don't understand a single word that is written there. Apologists have no clue what science means and Hamza Tzortzis doesn't even understand the most basic arithmetic. Roger Penrose of Oxford University has calculated that the odds of the Big Bang's low entropy condition existing by chance are on the order of 10 to the power of 10. That's 10 with 123 zeros. Now, instead of meaningful explanations, sound arguments or precise definitions, we get really lame relabeling exercises such as life, which becomes embodied conscious agents of comparable intelligence to humans, known as ECAs. <laughs> All it does is show amazing creativity. Is any of this compelling? No. Apologists claim I simply explain away the fine-tuning, which Victor Stenger so aptly calls anthropic coincidence. When, I mean, all I do is reject their claims, and I do this on different levels and grounds. And my analogy is that claiming the universe is fine-tuned for life is like claiming water is fine-tuned for a scuba diver. Then they run off finding evidence for hydrogen and oxygen, you know, the atoms, and then molecular bonding, finding the correlation between water depth and pressure, and all sorts of things you can find out about water, without ever considering the obvious, the fact that the scuba diver only exists and adapts to an existing environment, water. In other words, and many people will know this, the perfectly adapted universe for a water puddle. So what we get are large numbers, which apologists usually don't understand, don't even know what, you what unit they're take, in. For instance, the strong nuclear force, the value is 0 0.007. If it was 0 0.006... Okay. In, in, in what units? I, I don't have the units. This is a you, quote you, from... You've just got a figure and you don't know what units it is. No, I don't. Right. This... They just use the numbers to insinuate importance or something meaningful when they're not. What we realize looking at these numbers is that the mathematical approach comes up empty. What dishonest apologists like Hamza Tzoltas do is they misrepresent physicists and cosmologists and try to quote mine their findings. They come up with their pseudo philosophical ramblings and relabel mathematical or empirical values in epistemic probability 
And this is utter nonsense and probably due to a lack of understanding. Epistemic probability is simply put um, in contrast to classic probability, the empirical measurement is just based on evidence. But there is no evidence that a universe with altered parameters does not allow for life. Because we don't have another universe to test to the claim. We don't know what life actually is. And we don't know under what conditions this life is possible. So the misrepresentation approach comes up empty. 200 years ago, scientists predicted humans would perish if accelerated to 50 kilometers an hour. <laughs> Did they? No. Instead, I mean, we went 10 kilometers, but per second. And humans have lived in zero gravity without dying, and life has been found inside meteorites. We have found living creatures thriving on sulfur, methane, or acid at 30,000 above and 30,000 below sea level. So these are the facts, and they clearly refute the outlandish claim that any tiny variance will kill all life and all life forms. The biological approach comes up empty. Now, if I have a universe based on naturalism, I would expect an old age earth and chaos surrounding it. If it is based on theology, I would have, I don't know, meaningful humans in a structured universe looking as though it were custom built. The universe, and in particular Earth, would be a clear and layered environment arranged for us to thrive on this planet and the entire universe. Instead, I find that elements took their time and were thrown into space by exploding stars and were then picked up by clumps which formed and they form new stars, and then gravity helped collect planets around them. So reality and naturalism has Earth with diseases, plagues, poisons, earthquakes, tsunamis, volcanoes, hail, radiation, germs, droughts, tornadoes, epidemics, lightning, floods, avalanches, fires, as well. and they're all destroying life. So the physics approach comes up empty. And humans are pattern-seeking animals. We are unable to tell whether a hollow mask of a human face is pointing towards us or away from us. We used to draw in conclusions from different instances, elements or occurrences. If we look at a sufficient number of numbers, we are bound to find some apparent connections, even if there are none. Ask what prediction can be made by their selection if one differed, there's no reply and ask what elements should be adjusted by how much to change what characteristic. There is no reply. So the reason approach comes up empty. Looking at the universe, we have badass asteroids and meteors whizzing around, ready to distribute life or destroy life, depending on where and what they hit, at what velocity and what angle. And Earth is hardly equipped with any degree of precision as we wobble through space with a huge amount of axial precession. In an orbit around the Sun which varies by 5 million kilometers every year, a planet with varying parameters of almost everything, nothing in this chaotic universe is precise. So the cosmological precision approach comes up empty. If I look at the parameters governing nature, I notice that function follows condition. So I don't see a zebra on the moon or a mule flying through the sky. This shows that life adapts to the environment it finds. So the rational approach comes up empty. If our planet would be so perfectly adjusted for human life, why would it then require a creator to still create humans? This would be automatic. So the logical approach comes up empty. If a car mechanic replaces an engine in a car, she or he will take the factory settings well, get everything running and then fine-tune the engine to run at its best performance and most economical settings within this environment and engine bay. A bad programmer will get a program to run and then iron out the mistakes to test and then fine-tune his creation. Is God like a car mechanic or a bad programmer making mistakes which require fine-tuning? My expectation of a God is a higher expectation. but. Maybe a theist doesn't expect too much quality, competence and craftsmanship from their respective god. 
And I mean, do theists think a god cares what the expansion rate of the universe is when she can do anything? So come on, the theological approach comes up empty too. Now the only way we can come to grips with the universe and the only way to find an explanation and develop an understanding is via naturalism. Because theism comes up empty. And fine-tuning, as we can see, using the approaches that I've chosen, does not exist. Thanks for your time.